this program is brought to you by Dream Community Television, now from the television studios of Keaton High School. Welcome to the Dog Pound. I'm your host, Ethan Wong. Today on the Dog Tradition, Mr. Lockman. Tell us about the electrical field. So the electrical field I find very interesting. I've always been fascinated by the fact that we could use electricity to power things, control things. I always kind of liked that growing up. Um, the electrical industry is always evolving. You know, technology keeps advancing, and we keep advancing with it. So it just really makes it interesting because it's always in motion and always something new to learn. Mm -hmm. Compare the benefits of working for the union versus non-union, vice versa. So what I know of the union is the union offers a structure and a money plan that can be better for some people. Um, in the union, you're guaranteed certain rates, mm -hmm. certain hours, certain benefits. They're long-term benefits, the retirement. Those are all very good for later in life. The non-union offers a little more freedom. You're allowed to you know, make your own way through. You don't have to follow the same rules. Like you can kind of decide for yourself what you want to do. Same rules. Like you can kind of decide for yourself what you want to do. Tell us how many years you have worked in the trades. So I've been doing this since I left high school in 1984, and I actually did it the summer of 1983. So, you know, I've been doing this 30-something years. Describe your journey through getting licensed as an electrician. So the path to becoming an electrician is you need to work in the trade. The first year in the trade is pretty hard. You are basically just a grunt. You grab stuff from the truck, you clean up the job sites, but you learn the material as you go through that first year. You learn what the terms mean, what the materials are, and then you start to learn a little bit about the simplicity of what to do. By your second and third year, you should be able to change plugs, switches, light fixtures, things like that. And then you should start school in that time period. You have to do, I believe it's four years right now of night school. And it coincides with the end of what they call your apprenticeship. And then you take a test to get licensed. Why did you choose to go into the electrical field? Um, it was something I was good at as a little kid. Like, I was seven or eight years old and took the radio apart in my house. I wanted to know how it worked and what went on. Um, the dishwasher broke, and I thought I could fix it. It was those kind of things. And then, you know, I didn't learn anything in high school that was going to send me to college, so I decided to take up the trade. Describe a regular day on the job. So regular day in the job, you meet at the shop, you go over what you're going to do for the day, and you head out to the jobs. Um, I own a company where we do about 50% residential, 50% commercial. You go to the job site, you take the tools out of the truck, you set up, you figure out what the task at hand is, you get the job done, you clean up, you talk to the customer, I tell the guys leave the place cleaner when you leave than when you got there, and you go to the next job. Tell us about the skills required to become licensed. So you have to go to school, you have to understand the danger and the complexity of electricity. Obviously, you want to stay safe doing this. Um, yeah, I don't know. Uh, I'm lost on that one. <clears throat> Compare the electrical trade to others, like pros and cons. So I like the electrical trade because it's cleaner. And I think it's like, I don't know, like smarter. It's a, it's a little more advanced. Uh, and not that people that do carpentry and plumbing on smart, but there's something about electricity that's a little more like high tech, mm -hmm. and I like that part of it. Describe the process through apprenticeship. So the apprenticeship is what I said. You have to start the first year, you do it, you just do what you're told, learn what the materials are, get stuff off the stock, like it's all grunt work. Mm -hmm. The second year, you start school, and they start to teach you some of the stuff that you're seeing at work, and you progress through and what's supposed to happen is you're supposed to do three or four years of school, three or four years of apprenticeship and at the end you have to take a test and pass it. Discuss the importance of trades in our lives. Oh, so I think the trades are very important. I mean, it's, a, it's how we have developed as a, as a country, as a nation, as a world. Um, you know, the industry that is provided by doing these trades 
provides people with conveniences, comforts in their homes, in their businesses. It provides this whole studio. Mm -hmm. You know, without the trades, you couldn't do any of this. Mm -hmm. Describe the uh, type of environment you work in. So I'm pretty fortunate. I own a company. I worked in a lot of places. Some of our environments can be very, you know, hard, harsh. They can be dirty. Um, I've done a lot of work in Boston, in downtown Boston. I've been in basements, sub-basements. There's critters crawling around. Uh, you know, some of that can be hard. I based the company on service work. We do a lot of clean in people's houses, in people's businesses. It's actually nice, and I like going to a different place to work every mm -hmm. day. Mm -hmm. What advice would you give someone wanting to get into the electrical field? Well, to make sure that they have some interest in doing electric work, that there's something about electricity that they're drawn to. And then I would tell them to talk to somebody like me or another company, and maybe on a summer come and do a you know, couple months of working the trade, seeing what it's like, and making sure that this is what you want to sign up for. Because our trade is a little bit grueling physically. Um, you know, this isn't something you want to be doing when you're 60 or 65 years old. You, you got to make sure you sign up for this. It, it can be hard. Mm -hmm. Thank you for your time today. You're very welcome. We learned about your experience as an electrician. We also learned ins and outs of the trade and learned a ton of valuable advice on becoming an electrician. Excellent. Credits. Devin Kimball, Justin Leeser, Isaiah McKinney, Aiden Mondesier, Isabel Sanchez, Brianna Bellamy, Jalen Thompson, Abby Turner, Abby Turner, Julia Vinzel, Nathan Wan, Ethan Wan. Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Professor H, and we're going to talk about being on time is late, early is on time, and late is fire. You're late. Like always. I do. I do not want to hear you. You're always late. Matter of fact, you're fired. Get Please, out. No. No. Get no. Out. I need this Get job. Out. I need this job. Get out. Great. You're on time then. Thank you. Wait. Where's my boss? What? Oh, hello, sir. You know what? I need to give you a promotion. You're always on time. Actually, you're always early. Matter of fact, you want to be CEO? Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Now say it with me. Being on time is late. Early is on time, and late is fire. Thank you for your time and attention. This program is brought to you by Kent Community Television, now from the television studios of Kent High School. Welcome to the Dog Pound. I'm your host, Bella Sanchez, and today we have Michaela Costello, who will be talking about an up being an upcoming captain on Girls Varsity Soccer. Michaela, thanks for being on our show. Thanks for having me. Explain how you were first interested in soccer. Um, well, my dad played soccer. And my sister played soccer, so it kind of just ran in the family. So I was just, I kind of just got thrown into it. How old were you when you started playing? Um, I think I was like four ish. Um, describe your experience so far with Canton High School soccer. Um, so it's definitely it's. I've had two very different experiences for the two years that I've played. Um, because the first year was COVID, um, and I was a little freshman, and it was kind of scary coming in. Um, but it's just been, it's only been a positive experience, and I think um, the team is always so close and so tight-knit, and it's just a really good group of girls. Um, tell us how you felt when you found out that you were going to be a captain for the upcoming season. Um, I was a little bit, I was like, I wanted to be captain, so I was pretty happy, but, you know, that quickly turned into, like, oh, like, I actually, like, I need to do stuff, like, um, it's a big role to take on, 
Um, but I, like, I'm up for the challenge, and I think it'll be fun to have, like, that voice, like, in the locker room and um, be able to be a person that people can come talk to on the team. Do you always wish to be a captain, like, ever since you were a freshman? Yeah, I mean, by senior year, I wanted to be a captain for some sport. Um, I just think it's, like, important to have a leadership role like that, um, especially if you have been dedicated to the team um, and really enjoy, like, being around your teammates. Um, compare your experience from high school soccer to club soccer. Um, so high school soccer is a lot different than club soccer. I would say the team is a lot closer for high school because you're around each other like 24-7, team dinners, practices, everything. Um, uh, but club soccer, it's a different style of soccer. It's more like it, I, w I would think like it's more com competitive in the sense that like the – level of soccer is usually higher because you have like really good soccer players that like the top people from their high school teams that come and play in these leagues and it's just a lot more it's a lot more competitive um and it's a lot faster the play is a lot faster whereas high school it's more like you're very competitive and I feel like there's more like spirit involved because you're playing for something like you're playing for your town for your high school um but the soccer I would say the level isn't as high but that's with any sport I think high school versus club do you think club like benefited you like the most and like gave you like more exposure in high school yeah it definitely like I got I mean it gave me another set of friends too because it allowed me to like meet people from other towns and I got exposed to a lot of different coaching styles and stuff. Um, so I think it was very beneficial in that sense. Explain your journey from freshman year, like during COVID and to where you are now. Yeah, so freshman year, COVID, it wasn't a normal year. I didn't know what being on a high school team was like. Um, and that was kind of like my only experience with girls soccer to go off of coming back this year um but it's I think this year was like definitely more like the traditional like high school sports season because everything's back to normal now and we got to enjoy like I didn't even go into like the locker room until this year like I didn't even know what it looked like and then team dinners are like a very big aspect that you kind of like we didn't have my freshman year um and I think, yeah, it's just different people and different personalities, personalities, and yeah, it's just been it's been fun both years. So. What are some things that you want to accomplish this season coming up? Um, I definitely want to pick up where we left off last year. I don't want um, that was a tough way to go out last year, losing in like the final minutes. So I think definitely advancing further in playoffs would definitely be one of my goals. What's one way that you want to improve as a player? Um, I definitely want to be more vocal on the field. Um, and I think being captain will give me a little more incentive to do so. Um, and I just want to make sure um, I'm helping other people improve on the field and get better and um, have more chemistry as, as a team. Who or what have you looked up to that's helped influence your game today? Um, probably my sister. I mean, she just, her being older and just going to her games and watching her play and see seeing the type of player she was, um, I think that really helped inspire me to um, follow in her footsteps and kind of take, like, aspects of her game and bring into my game I don't think we're the same player at all but I think she definitely has a lot of qualities that um I would like to have too do you think those influence your ways of like being captain or like what you want to be as a captain um yeah definitely I think she was very hard working so I think um I just have to continue that and kind of 
help other people like find um a good like like kind of like find their passion for the game and stuff and but I think we're different people too so I think my way of like leading people will be different than hers tell us some ways your coach like club or high school has helped you improve in soccer and outside of soccer yeah I think so our high school coach um Idris Senyojo he um he was new my freshman year so and I was very quiet freshman year so I kind of just you know sat in the back I didn't really have too many conversations with him but this past year I think like I talked to him a lot more and like he's just he's very detail oriented and I think that's very important when you're trying to win games and trying to improve as a team as a whole um yeah and then my club coaches they're a lot different they're from I think one's from like Ireland like he's just very like he's a lot louder but like it's like a different coaching style but I think being able to um adapt to both different styles is like very important in developing as a player um what are some things you're looking forward to for the upcoming season um I'm looking forward to just welcoming the new freshmen in and then um seeing everybody get better as players I know a lot of people will be taking on bigger roles and different roles than last year with all the seniors that graduated will be having We'll have some missing pieces at first, but I think a lot of people will rise to the occasion and um, we'll do pretty good. Um, thank you for coming, talking about being upcoming captain for girls soccer. For Canyon Community Television, I'm Bella Sanchez, and thank you for watching. <laughs> Megan Beatty, Liam Conley, Tristan Carrera, Avery, Devin Kimball, Justin Lesser, Isaiah McKinney, Avery, oh, Aiden Montier, Isabel Sanchez, Brittany, I don't know, Jalen Thompson, Abby Turner, Julie Vanoskal, Nathan Wong, Ethan Wong. You know what? I don't really like this game. Are we feeling cool? Community television, the student station. This program is brought to you by Canyon Community Television, now from Television Studios of Canyon High School. Welcome to the Dog Pound. I'm your host, Megan Beatty. Today we have Deanna Kolakitas, and we will be talking about being a freshman on the varsity basketball team at Canton High School. Thank you for having me. Tell us about what made you interested in playing basketball. So growing up, my sister, we were only like two and a half years apart, so she was very like, inspiring to me. I'd always say, oh, I look up to him so much. Um, I also love like Jason Tatum and Isaiah Thomas, who retired. But they're very similar, and they're great shooters, and I just love watching them play because they're great. Describe your favorite memory of basketball. My favorite memory was definitely in fourth grade. Um, not a big deal at the time, but our team like had like three games. We went made it to the championship. We played like I think it was Millis, and we ended up winning like eighteen to sixteen. 
it wasn't the greatest game, but definitely great to play. Um, but yeah, we won by two and everyone was just like ecstatic. There's a video that I still love watching sometimes of everyone just like jumping up and down on the bench. So it was very fun and my dad was a coach. So it was also like great to have my dad like coaching me and my teammates and he. Um, in the summer, we had a win for the summer league team for Can Can. How did you feel? Did that like kind of bring back that memory of fourth grade? Describe how you felt on the days leading up to the high school tryouts. I was very nervous leading up to the high school tryouts because, like, freshman year, it's kind of more of a pressure because you don't have sisters as well. Um, but I have my sister as well, so I have my sister as well who played. But it was still a lot of pressure. I would be, like, outside practicing before every single, like, day of tryouts. And my club coach, like, made it, like, an emphasis that we should be making varsity. So it was quite nerve-wracking the first couple of days. What club team do you play for? Playing right now, we're traveling um, Thursday actually to go to Atlantic City. So um, describe your first experience with the community of Canton High School basketball. So I was like nervous like going into the first couple of games, but everyone was very welcoming. They were really excited to have me, so it was like a great like sense of relief to know that people are supporting you. Um, it was an away game actually the first tournament, but I mean the first game. But um, the first like couple home games, there was a lot of people coming. It was like a great environment to have everyone cheer you on. The band came a couple of times, so it was good to have them as well. Um, great energy and yeah. You said earlier that you play for the Huskies Club. Can you describe or compare your experiences with the Canton High School with your club team? Yeah, definitely. So both of my coaches like both wanted the best for me. They had some different coaching styles, but definitely like club is like more like it's like a job it's like an actual like, job like you're there four days a week you have tournaments on the weekends it's a lot of hours you're with the same people um but during like can basketball season that takes obviously like tight, top priority and you basically do your club season just to like prepare for your like high school season so it's very they're very different but obviously like can basketball is like the top priority and like takes like you practice for can and not for your club Explain your future dreams, including the sport. So I'm only a freshman, so I don't really like know what I want out of like college or basketball, or whatever I want to do yet. But I definitely want to like be a coach for like my kids when they grow up, or like in college, like get together with some friends or play for like the college's club team. I don't know what I like exactly want to do yet, but definitely I want to keep playing basketball no matter what. Compare what you will do differently. Um, so I like came in first, very like nervous for the season. So now that I already like had like background, I know that um, like this season will be better, obviously. But I feel like the first couple of like games, our team like really not practicing as hard as we should have been, or like taking it as serious as like the beginning of the season. Like we have to like get on to like a winning record. So definitely just like build a community, get get together like before the season starts, doing some like obviously like summer league again, which is very helpful. Explain the improvements you've seen the team make over the year that you have played for varsity on Canton basketball. So the beginning of the year, I feel like, like I said, like we didn't, I feel like we did take it very seriously, but we could have like gotten a better record to start out with so that we had like momentum going into like, like the depth of like the big chunk of the season. But we had a strong community, I feel like, just because we had like background outside of like the sport, but definitely like more team dinners, more like team building activities. But other than that, I think we did pretty good. We just needed to like remain consistent throughout the year. Tell us some weaknesses you have overcome in your basketball career. So definitely, like I could do better defense. Um, that's something I've always, I feel like I've struggled with. Um, communication as well. Like it's really important to make the team successful and like the whole team getting along, having a good flow going to win the game. So I feel like I should be more vocal and like be more of a leader to help support other people. Tell us how you deal with these mistakes or downfalls during the basketball game and after the basketball game. 
As long as you like, I feel like the biggest mistake people can get is like getting in their head when they're playing the sport. Because if you make a mistake and you focus on that mistake for like the whole entire game, then you're not going to play as well as you could have been. So like, as well as you just like get it, like you brush it off and you say you're got the next one and then you keep going and fix that mistake, then everything's okay. But you also have your teammates to support you. So if you do make a mistake, they'll be there to tell you to like get back on track and you got this. You're great. Don't worry about it. Speaking of teammates, what makes a great teammate to you? A great teammate, like you have to have, a, you have to be like a great leader. You have to tell, you have to be like demanding, but also like not in a way that like you're like bossing around with people. But you also have to like make sure that people know what they're doing, or if they're confused, you can help explain. But you also like can't be like a ball hog. You have to like be a team player. You have to be there for everyone else. So if anyone's like struggling, you can be there. But you just have to like have like good like basketball IQ and make sure that people know what they're doing, and you can help them out as well. Is there anyone on the team that you think stood out being a good captain or a teammate? So Erin Beatty, definitely a good captain. She was the one working in the off season to make sure that we have like a good season, like getting prepared. She worked out all the summer league stuff and coached some games. So I so a great leader on the floor. I mean, she was vocal, great communicating. Um, she helped like communicate what we thought we needed to improve on to us and as well as the coaches. So she was like a great leader to have. Emily. Great leader as well. Same thing as like Samaya, very vocal on the court, which was great because we really needed that. Thank you for coming, Deanna. We learned a lot about the team and your experiences and what makes a great teammate, which clearly you are one. For Canton Community Television, I'm Megan Beatty. Isabella, Brianna, Jayla, Abby, <laughs> Julia, Nathan, Ethan, <laughs> Ethan, that's all. Good morning class, today we'll be learning about addition. So addition is basically when you add, for example you have two plus two. Does anyone know what that is? Yes. Four. Yes, good job. Oh my god, look at this. No <laughs> way. <laughs> Would you guys please pay attention? <laughs> <laughs> Class is over? I didn't even notice. Remember guys, there's a test tomorrow. Look at that loser studying. Oh my god, that's so embarrassing. I'm coming around with a test now. Be ready. What test? Yeah, what? <laughs> Did you see Jessica today? Yes. Okay, students, so today I want to be passing back your test from yesterday. Good job, Jessica. Thank you. There's no retake. What'd you get, Jessica? I got a 100 because I was on my phone while the teacher was teaching the lesson. Make sure to stay off your phone and put it away when the teachers are teaching you and make sure respect something. 